Hello friends, good morning. I hope you are well. Today we're starting out here outside. I wanted to check on the garden this morning, see if we need to water anything. I've been trying to water a little bit more just because we haven't had a whole lot of rain and I feel like um, some of the things that are in the ground, the soil is more sandy here and it seems to drain better, which I guess is could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing. It seems like the more sunny days we have, the more it really dries out the ground. So I'm trying to make sure I keep up with watering everything. I did make some coffee. It is, I don't know what happened. It's an almond creamer, but I've used it before and not had a problem, but it looks quite disgusting. I will show you guys. I don't know if you can see. Kind of looks a bit curdled or something. So um, it tastes fine, but I feel like I don't want to drink it because it, it looks not too good. Um, Anyway, I also have some DIYs we're gonna do later in this video for just a fun spring pillow. It's a Dollar Tree DIY. I think for each, for one pillow, I spent literally $1.25 and then for the other one, I did end up spending a couple of dollars to make the pillow, but it looks really cute. So we're gonna make those and also a fun little like floral vase. And if you're looking for more like garden and planter ideas, I'm gonna put a link for that. Is it up top here? No, here. I think it's on this side. <laughs> I'll put a link for that video. I did some Dollar Tree DIY planters. Let's start out with a little garden tour and go check on all of our plants. So over here, we've got our peppermint here, which is doing well. We've got onions here and some cherry tomatoes and Kylie sprouted some watermelon seeds. So they did have some kind of bug that was kind of attacking them. And I, I picked off the leaves that looked damaged. So we're gonna see if either of these plants actually works, but under, um, I actually like dug out some of the sand and then added in like a richer black dirt on top along with a little bit of fertilizer and then push some of the mulch back in. I'm planning to go for a walk later. So I've got socks on, <laughs> socks with uh, sandals. But anyway, we've got garlic here and I don't think anything has, oh, wait a minute. Let me see, let me see. Something like stepped in here. I wonder if it was deer, but I think that's a garlic shoot sprouting down there. And I can't tell what this is. It's in the area that I did garlic in here. That might be one. I think this is a weed. But I think that one might be a garlic. But anyway, I did them in here. Our zucchini is doing really well. And also, I can't remember, I think I had cucumbers and delicata squash. They're finally like doing well and branching off and making some vines because they looked like they were struggling for a little while to really get going and you know, they stayed small after I transplant. I might've transplanted them too soon, that could be why, but I feel like they're finally making leaves and starting to expand. I don't think we have anything on them yet, just a lot of flowers, but making some good progress. This little tomato is kind of struggling. These leaves, like what could be causing this? Let me know down below in the comments. I am not sure. I picked off some, but it definitely seems like it's struggling with something or other. Even though it is making um, fruit, so something's bothering this plant. The kale on the other hand, next to it, this kale is doing just amazing. Um, yeah, this is like my best kale plant. Definitely need to pick some. It's doing so, so good. I bought one peppermint plant and I actually split it up and divided the plant into three places. So here is another third of it. And that one is doing well and expanding. And then we've got some milkweed here. But next to them, I also cleared out this little patch and added in soil here, like a raised bed soil as well as some fertilizer mixed in. And I just planted these collard greens in here. I'm hoping they get a bit of shade since they're kind of like under the trees here. Um, and we'll see, but we've got a sweet potato that I finally got one to sprout and I have it growing here. Although I feel like some of the leaves have come off. I don't know, we'll see. 
something looks odd about it to me, but I'm trying to get a sweet potato plant growing in there. So we'll see how that comes together. I've also got sesame and bib lettuce over here. So the sesame is coming along well and Mike's mom is enjoying this. She's been, actually I have to try it because she told me she wraps it with um, the romaine that we're growing and then with um, some of the kale and she rolled it up with rice in it and kind of like a red pepper paste. And I guess it was really delicious. So I wasn't home, but I'm growing these for her because she enjoys having the sesame leaves. And then in the back, I've got a few butternut squash that we're attempting to grow and we'll see what happens. While you guys are watching, let me know what you are hoping to plant this year or if you're gonna be doing any gardening. I always love knowing like, you know, what people are planting or what grows well, what grows well in your area. And since that we've moved to Florida, I'm definitely trying to learn what grows well here. So you guys can see we've got this tomato plant here and I've heard that tomatoes sometimes don't do well in Florida. Let me know if you have experience or not, but um, I can clearly see the one in this planter is doing way, way better than um, the one in the ground. So I don't know if that has anything to do with the fact that it's not the local Florida soil. It's like a raised bed mix, but we've got one very large tomato on here and I've got to get this romaine because it's, it might be getting too hot for it, but it's almost two feet tall now in the back. And here too, you can see they're just starting to shoot up. So we need to really kind of use those and enjoy them. I've got some flowers I added. These are gonna be Cosmos. I may have planted them a bit close and you can also see some of these seeds washed in from all the rain that came off the roof. Um, but my cilantro's back there and somehow some cilantro seeds must have gotten washed over in the rain and they've taken some space to sprout in here. And then we also have dill. So I've got dill going in here and a bunch more underneath here as well. Japanese eggplants. We've already been able to eat a few this year. And one more big one over here. We, the two biggest ones we've already eaten, but we've got several more that are starting in here. So that's good. And then some kale here. These are not quite as big um, here as well. Not as big as the one that was out there in the ground. I don't know if it's because it's in the ground or because maybe it gets a little more shade there. But over here, I did a yellow squash and I'm basically hoping to just let the plant kind of come down and hang onto the ground um, and just spread out like as it needs. So I've got some pink swamp milkweed buried in here. I put the seeds in. I already had them in the refrigerator for two weeks and um, I think that we did get one heavy rain and it, maybe that maybe that kind of disturbed the seeds. I don't know if it like flooded the soil here because nothing is sprouting yet. So we'll see. One more planter and these are like 10 inches deep or so. So I've planted them, like dug a hole and then filled the mulch in around them. But basically my idea with this was that I'm hoping to you know, put better soil in here than just what's the comes on the ground here found around the foundation of the house. You can see it's like a lot sandier soil and I don't know if it has much nutrition for the plants, but also for the fact that if I wanted to take some of these plants when we move, um, I'll be able to do that since like we are just renting right now and the landlord did say that we could do whatever we wanted in the yard, which was so kind and gracious of him. But um, yeah, I might want to just fill the mulch back in and take, hopefully if the milkweed grows, take them with us when we move. But I got two of the flower bomb packs. Oh look, one is already. So they're kind of like all mix of like wild flowers. And I put two packs in here from Dollar Tree and they're definitely filling in so well. Definitely just waiting to see them actually all start blooming. I think it's going to be so beautiful. I did add some of the, some extra Cosmo seeds that I had out here in the front and we'll see how they come up, but I had extra seeds. So I thought, why not just put them here and see where they come up? Cause I didn't have any other planters to put them in. 
and I'm super excited about this one because I did the same thing, digging out some of the local soil and then adding in nice raised bed mix with some fertilizer and then just mulching back in around it. But I finally have a sweet potatoes growing here. And I believe these are the Japanese ones. They're like a white flesh, purple skin potato so this one's finally doing really good i'm so excited I, I was honestly trying for months to get this to happen and it's it's finally taking off so hoping we end up getting something from that and then over here what is this can i remember oh this was another um it's the english cucumber like the long narrow burpless one so also figuring i can kind of let it come out here on the ground and just have a little bit of room to spread out in here we've got our some i don't know the name i think it was some type of a black cherry tomato and they're they're quite good they're not as sweet as a regular tomato would be so keep that in mind if you're gonna get them i feel like all in all people might enjoy um this plant is getting heavy i feel like all in all people might enjoy the red tomatoes more than these but we've been getting tomatoes for a while from here there's so many but this doesn't look good i don't know what's on this plant but it's the same thing as i feel like something is going on with this plant where it doesn't look as healthy so i might need to do a little bit of reading and research on that I did put basil in the back and this is the first time I've been able to really grow like an abundant supply of basil. It's always died on me before. I've never been able to really grow like a, a big supply of basil like this. It's awesome. But I think because it maybe gets like a little bit of shade and not so much direct sun because I used to have it um, at our last house on the deck and I, I think that it just got too much sun and cooked basically i also did citrus fertilizer on the mandarin and the tangelo i think i have them reversed i think this one's the mandarin actually i have them labeled but this is like all can you guys see the difference um down here is where the leaves were and all this is new growth so i feel like it's doing really well I'm trying to make sure i water them frequently enough so that they don't get dried out but they have a lot of new shoots even here you guys can see where the plant ended with the darker green and then all this lighter green is all new leaves and shoots it did make one little tiny fruit but then it kind of got yellowish and i just picked it off it didn't really develop and i mean to be honest i think we'd rather it just put its efforts into making itself into a bigger tree than trying to make us a little orange right now but yeah it's doing so good so i'll i'll see if i can link the citrus fertilizer but i got these from somebody on etsy and i'll see if i can find a link or a name of the the shop if you guys are interested let me know and i can i can get you the information where i got these trees he had a whole variety i think this was called a berry basket and it's been making some little pink flowers. There's one. Isn't this the coolest thing? I've never before seen strawberries that had pink flowers. I think it's so gorgeous. So we haven't gotten anything from them yet, but this plant has been doing really well in filling in and making so many leaves and just hoping that maybe over the next couple months like we're gonna actually start getting some berries this year from it it's made some flowers but nothing yet really as far as any little berries i don't think i've got one more japanese eggplant here because my other one was doing so well i decided to get another one put it in one of these clay pots and then just let it grow and hopefully this one will do really well also, especially because we've been able to eat the, the eggplant. These are leaf miners, aren't they? I don't know. I, I read some things that said you should pick off the leaves if they have leaf miners and then just leave the healthy leaves. I don't know if that would be the best thing to do because it's like all four or five of the largest leaves. I'll have to do some reading on that. But this is another type of strawberry that I just got. Oh, we actually have strawberries on here. Um, I don't remember the name of this one. If I can find it, I'll put it on the screen. I don't know if it's said actually, 
but I got this in, oh, did I save it? Yeah, it didn't say. I got it from, I think Home Depot when I got this one. So I usually try to save the little tags so I can remember what I have. But I do remember this one would have been the All Star, which has a berry, but it's still green. Oh, it has a little berry there too. So I got two plants. One of them is definitely struggling. It pretty much died back, but now it's got some new leaves. So we'll see what happens. And then the other one is still kind of doing okay over here. But I think this one was called, yeah, the All Star. And then, like I said, that one was the um, berry basket, it was called. And then we've got a little more mint in here. This is where I stuck the other portion of my mint plant, the peppermint. Oh, and let's not forget this banana pepper plant because it's so small, but, and I've never grown one before, but look at this pepper. It grows like a little curl. Isn't this the cutest thing? I thought it was just, it's very cute. <laughs> There's one up here. This one's going a little bit more how I would have expected. But got to make sure these are getting enough water because they're dropping their um, little buds. I'm not sure. I feel like it should have more leaves, like for the making fruit already. I'm not sure. I've never grown one of these before either. This plant here, um, what is it called? Porto, Portolaca? I think. I'll put it on the screen. It makes all these bright pink flowers that are gonna come out this afternoon. I'll have to come out and show you guys. But I love the little curls. They look like little um, rosettes of petals. And it's basically a succulent plant. It's doing so, so good. And it's just so beautiful. And I, I love that texture. <laughs> it's just such a unique plant. I also sprouted some pomegranate seeds. I have no idea. I would imagine these would take many, many years to get anything out of, but I think pretty soon I'll probably need to like repot them. At least I think that's what it is. I put pomegranate seeds in here and then these came up and I thought I put in like five, six, seven seeds, something like that. So yeah, I'm thinking that's what this is. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I think I'm growing some kind of pomegranate tree and I'm growing weeds, but <laughs> we're gonna grow them and find out. This is the fertilizer that I put all around, like everything besides the citrus. I got its own thing for the citrus, but for uh, flowers and vegetables, like this is the one that I went with and it seems to be working super well. So let's go ahead and get started with our first Dollar Tree DIY. This is a super easy spring pillow DIY. I'm gonna fill up this white trash bag with all of these leftover um, plastic bags. I always save them when I get them in the store. So I opened up this roll of material and I did already iron it a little bit, but it was $1.25. I was so excited to find it in Dollar Tree. Now I took the shorter end and I folded it over and just hot glued it together just so I could get like a nice clean edge without like frayed material if that makes sense and then wrap this kind of up and around over that big bag of bags that you made and then just glue it together and this is going to actually become the long side of the pillow and then now we can take either end of the pillow and I basically folded the material in kind of like I was wrapping a gift and I just used my glue gun my high heat glue gun and just pressed and held that together and you can also use something like you know some metal scissors or something to kind of press it and hold it if you don't want to use your fingers be careful doing this I definitely burn myself a couple of times if you have some kind of glove or like even the Dollar Tree sells those little fingertip covers the little silicone hot glue protectors for your fingertips those might work well for me I felt like they always would fall off my fingers they just I don't know they made it harder for me to work so I never really used them but I will use the back of the scissors to just kind of press and hold this in place until the glue sets up and dries and then you have your pillow and the daisy one is so cute just as is but I did come in and do the exact same thing again with just a plain burlap here and I have another idea for it but we so we glued it together the exact same way and then took these little burlap flowers which I found in Dollar Tree for the first time actually they had two different packages of them so I did get a couple of each so that I could just mix and match I think there was 
um, maybe five flowers in each package, but I, I bought a few packages and then opened them up and just mix and match, and I did have some flowers left over. But it was a fun way to just decorate this pillow really easy, and you know, I think it's going to fit with a, any type of like farmhouse decor, boho decor. It's just kind of simple and rustic, it has a little country charm about it, and I think this pillow turned out really cute. So I have these outside and because we just have plastic on the inside of them, so they make a really good recycle project or recycle craft idea and some fun spring decor and summer decor ideas. Now for the next one, I have a little glass vase here from the Dollar Tree and then Dollar Tree had these burlap banners. So I actually, took it apart a little bit. I took two pieces of the banner off and I just neatly hot glued those the edges together and my idea here was to kind of create a vase that looks like a paper bag wrapped flower bouquet as if you went to a flower shop and we're basically just gluing the two ends of these banner pieces together so that they make a circle and then we're putting that over top of the vase or I guess I should say putting the vase down inside of it and then you can add water if you want and this would be so pretty but I'm actually just going to do some artificial um, hydrangea flowers not hydrangea hyacinth flowers hydrangea would be so pretty too though you could also just kind of fold this burlap piece up around itself and then tie it with some ribbon you don't really need the glass part to hold it up unless you want it to stand up that way but if you wanted to fold it and make this look like a lovely tied floral arrangement then you could just lay it down on a shelf or maybe on your coffee table or something like that Now let's go ahead and jump into our dairy-free Alfredo. This is actually gonna be a gluten-free and vegan Alfredo sauce, so it's super good. It is light on your stomach. You are not gonna have like a super full, greasy, heavy feeling after. Your stomach will thank you, and it is so tasty and delicious, even if you are not um, plant-based or dairy-free. I think you'll still enjoy it or maybe just save the recipe in case you know someone who is pass this recipe on to them they are looking for a dairy-free alfredo this is a really really good one i have been working on it for a couple of years and i'm really happy with where we are at this point with the recipe so i wanted to just kind of share my updates on it with you guys so you'll need one head of cauliflower and we're just going to chop that all up along with one cup or a little over is okay of raw cashews oil for maybe about eight minutes or so give or take just until the cauliflower is like fork tender so you can easily put a fork through it we're going to take the cauliflower and cashews now and pop them into the blender along with one quarter cup of olive oil one quarter cup of the water um, that you were cooking your cauliflower in you want to reserve a quarter cup of that to add in along with about half to one teaspoon of salt i did about a half a teaspoon two tablespoons of nutritional yeast and also one and a half to two tablespoons of a lemon juice or a lime juice so i honestly i've done it both ways overall my family actually prefers this recipe with lime juice if you don't have a lime like i said a lemon will also work if you don't have a lemon or a lime opt for apple cider vinegar i've used them all and i think that the the lime juice is probably my favorite as strange as that sounds you definitely want to add some minced garlic in here i have these frozen minced garlic cubes two teaspoons of minced garlic if you if you want it a little bit heavier on the garlic flavor you could do three but if you don't want it overbearing, stick with two. I like to add it on top of my fettuccine rice noodles and then top it with some black pepper and also a little bit of nooch. You can just add nutritional yeast on top as well if you like that, but I love what's in the nooch. I will link it below for you guys. It just makes a really simple topping for your pasta dishes and it's really yummy. 
So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know, definitely let me know if you decide to try out my dairy-free Alfredo sauce. I hope that you guys enjoy it as much as we do. Our whole family loves it and my husband Mike thinks this is one of his all-time favorite meals. We always hope we have leftovers that we can eat the next day because it's so yummy. But anyway, thank you so much for being here. I am wishing you a beautiful day. I will see you guys soon in a new video. Bye!